on this week's show. The Model X is finally here, the Dieselgate scandal deepens, and how GM's new ad campaign for the Chevy Volt takes direct aim at Nissan and Toyota. These stories and more coming up next on 10. Enjoying today's show on YouTube and want to read the stories we're referring to today? Just head to our website at www.transportevolve.com forward slash TEN where you'll find today's show notes as well as links to the latest future car news, buying guides, tech primers and car reviews. It's Friday, October 2nd, 2015. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield and I'm now a full eight hours further west than I was the last time we did this show. Now, if only my stuff would hurry up and arrive. Well, after years of waiting, and I do mean years, Tesla's all-electric full-size Model X SUV has hit the streets of North America, with the first five production Model X SUVs now in the hands of some lucky customers. The handover ceremony, which took place on Tuesday night in Fremont, California, also doubled up as a little bit of a show and tell for Elon Musk, who gave a short presentation about the new and cool features of the Model X. In addition to laying claim to the title of the safest SUV and fastest SUV out there, Musk also took out some time to detail the beautifully elegant operation of the Model X's already famous, fully autonomous Falcon wing doors, as well as demonstrate the fully automatic front doors, which he likened to an invisible chauffeur. There are just too many details to go into here, but with an EPA-approved range of 257 miles for the Model X 90D and 250 miles for the Model X P90D, we're guessing it won't be long before we see Model Xs everywhere on the open highway. We may have been on hiatus for nearly two months, but there's still been plenty of news in the automotive world. And one which we've seen get bigger and bigger in the past two weeks is, of course, the now infamous Dieselgate. For those who haven't yet caught up, German automaker Volkswagen and its associated brands, including Audi, were caught a few weeks ago by the US Environmental Protection Agency shipping diesel-powered cars that included a piece of software in them designed specifically to cheat emissions tests and then emit more than four 40 times the legal NOx limit when driven on regular roads. Since then, we've seen the value of Volkswagen shares plummet, multiple countries threaten billion dollar fines, and the departure of numerous executives as the firm struggles to save itself. In fact, this week alone, Volkswagen has committed to a refit program of some 11 million non-compliant vehicles worldwide with the affected engine, has delayed its annual shareholder meeting in order to figure out what to do next, and the next week, US boss will head to Capitol Hill to face a congressional inquiry. As my mum used to say, be sure your sins will find you out. We're back to Tesla for this story, and yes, we've got three stories this week which are Tesla-based, which I know will upset some of our viewers, so in the interests of sanity, I'll keep this one brief. There was a time not so long ago when 200 miles was considered more than enough range for an electric car, but thanks to the Tesla Model S sedan, any automaker looking to make a splash has to shoot for at least 250 miles per charge or be considered subpar. But this week, presumably in an attempt to keep its place at the top of the range charts unchallenged, we heard that Tesla could be ready to offer a Model S battery pack replacement for existing Model S customers in the next five or 10 years, capable of 50% more range than today's cars. The news came courtesy of an interview Musk gave to a Danish TV channel in which he talked about self-driving cars, the future of the company, and of course, that upcoming Model X. Produced in tiny, tiny quantities by teams of highly trained artisans at Toyota's former IFA works in Toyota City, the 2016 Toyota Mirai hydrogen fuel cell sedan won't ever be a mass market vehicle, at least when it comes to its first generation of variant. But someday, dreams the chief engineer of Toyota's first production hydrogen fuel cell sedan, we'll see a range of vehicles all wearing the Mirai nameplate in just the same way that the Toyota Prius hybrid now has its own sub-brand of vehicles. Speaking to Autocar this week, Yoshisaku Tanaka admitted that wouldn't happen for another 10 or maybe even 20 years, but insisted that Toyota's hydrogen fuel cell technology has evolved so much in recent years that such a dream isn't beyond the bounds of reality. Like any new car to market, however, the Mirai will have to prove itself a whole lot more before it reaches the same kind of whirlwind recognition as the Prius. So when and if it becomes a household name, we'll revisit this particular prediction to see if it's likely or not. 
when a product or a company needs a bit of a pick-me-up in the popularity charts or a fresh start after a corporate merger, name changes are common. In fact, there's plenty of candy I enjoyed as a kid, which is now known by completely different names to the ones I remember them by. But it isn't just my favourite sweets which have a name change. So too can car companies, as this week's news from the automaker, formerly known as Fisker Automotive, shows. For those who don't remember, Fisker Automotive produced the Fisker Karma plug-in hybrid sports sedan from 2012 through until about 2013, before declaring bankruptcy and disappearing into the history books. But the Chinese automaker who purchased the remaining assets of the firm are making a move to bring the super sleek but not very efficient plug-in back to market. And so, I give you the Karma, not the car, or the thing that makes your life better. I mean, Karma Automotive which presumably will soon start making the Karma Karma. Or as I think we should call it, the Karma 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 Chameleon. Sorry, I just couldn't resist. I'll go now. Since the Tesla Model S launched in 2012, Tesla's network of super quick superchargers, where Tesla customers can refuel their Model S and Model X electric cars at speeds of up to 300 miles of range per charge, have been reserved exclusively for Tesla branded vehicles. But that fact was never intentional. Indeed, Tesla CEO Elon Musk went to great lengths last year to open up pretty much every Tesla patent, including ones pertaining to supercharging, in an open source agreement intended to encourage other automakers to join Tesla and share electric car technology in a grown-up and quid pro quo way. To date, not a single automaker has made a public move towards using the best charging standard there is out there on their vehicles. But this week we heard that Tesla CEO Elon Musk is in talks with at least one automaker in Europe to bring supercharging technology to a rival company. The comments made at two separate events last week in Germany point very strongly to luxury British brand Aston Martin as being the first to raise its hand to use technology from Tesla. While Musk wouldn't confirm or deny who the automaker is, he did say it was a European brand which was not German in origin. Given that former Nissan executive and known EV fan Andy Palmer is now boss at Aston Martin, we think this particular pairing is a match made in heaven. I can't wait. There aren't that many weeks that don't go by when we don't hear about some fantastical new battery development that promises to catapult electric vehicle technology into the mainstream. And as a consequence, we tend to ignore most of them. But this week, we got wind of a new type of flow battery developed by academics at Harvard, which is non-toxic, made of organic compounds, and cheap to make too. Enter the alkaline quione flow battery, a type of battery in which two different fluids of opposite charges are passed over a catalyst, producing an electric current in the process. While flow batteries aren't exactly new, this one is particularly impressive since it's the first flow battery to make use of abundant non-toxic materials in its construction, making it safer, cheaper and easier to build than flow batteries which went before. And when it comes to recharging, because flow batteries store their charge in liquid tanks next to the flow cell, it's possible to pump out the depleted electrolytic solution for freshly charged solutions, meaning that one day you too could be pumping your battery rather than pumping gas, and it will be super quick too. Neat! And finally, when it comes to advertising, it's fairly common for a company with a new product to sell to take pot shots at its nearest competition essentially an attempt to prove that its products are better than anything else out there. And this week, that's exactly what General Motors did to mark the launch of its all-new 2016 Chevy Volt range extended electric car. In a series of ads produced in the same vein as the rest of its most recent Challenging Perceptions series, GM tries to prove that the Toyota Prius is using technology popular 15 years ago and is thus obsolete, and then tries to say that owning a Nissan Leaf means you could get the same feeling you get being stuck in lift if you run out of charge. It's a low-hanging fruit kind of ad campaign, but it's already got plug-in fans pretty pissed, which makes us wonder if after all those years of bad GM Chevy Volt ads, it will start to talk to customers about how their cars should be advertised. If you've got any suggestions to make, do so in the comments below. 
We don't have any ads to share with you today, but we are about to start our own Patreon campaign. So do keep tuned to find out how you can help the network you love continue to produce great content for free. In the meantime, you'll find all the news that's fit to print at our website at www.transportevolve.com. Chat with us on Twitter at Transport Evolve or check out our latest shows on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Transport Evolved. As always, there's been a lot we haven't managed to fit into today's show, including news of Honda's new hydrogen fuel cell sedan. We take our staff Nissan Leaf up a mountain in the interests of science, a roundup from National Drive Electric Week, and what's next for Volkswagen in a world post Dieselgate. So when we're done, be sure to head to our site to read them all. Thanks for watching. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Have a great weekend, and until next time, keep evolving.